recording. All right, let's get started. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. It's a uh, Wednesday. What time is Tuesday night? <laughs> Tuesday. Right? Tuesday. Tuesday night. <laughs> don't know what day it is. You know what that's so cool about working from home and having your own business is you don't know what day it is. They kind of all <laughs> meld in together. Um, it's kind of fun. I enjoy that. <laughs> Sometimes it bites you, but you know. <laughs> it's not Friday. It's Friday. All right. That's right. But every day, I mean, I seriously, I love every, I enjoy every day. And so yeah. it's not like I hate Mondays. So that's right. what's so cool about doing, doing something you guys really, that you love. Um, and I get to work with really cool people like this. So uh, Abe, Christy, Jenny, Mike, thanks for joining us. Um, guys, this is Jenny's brainchild. Um, She's really creative and just an honor to work with her. She created all these slides. Um, we helped her brainstorm on the, the 10 ways that you're making private label hard, but she did all of this um, as far as putting it all together. So thanks for joining us. Jenny, I'll let you, let you take it away. And uh, everybody else, every, each person is gonna have a, a, a place in this uh, webinar. And guys, feel free to jump into it anytime. Um. So excited. Thank you. Uh, we're okay, I'm trying to get sorry. I'm going to learn to drive. So you guys get off. It's like driving a stick shift. You're going to jerk around a little bit. And I'm sorry, but um, cool. We've got 29 people in here. I don't know if uh, you guys saw the the cheat sheet ahead of time. I don't know if we want to share that link. We didn't talk about that ahead of time. But um, just kind of I think that it helps to have some uh, fill in the blank type things mm -hmm. that you can visually see. Uh, but it's something you can print out too. Um, so one of the things we've noticed over the last, Ryan and I have been doing the mentoring group since April of 2015. Uh, yes. And, um, so we're coming up on two years and we see the same issues where people keep getting stuck, the same hurdles, the same obstacles, and it's holding people back. And so I, we were just talking and like, you know, we should just come up with 10 ways people are making it hard because <laughs> honestly, it, a lot of people are making it harder than it needs to be. And, and our job, we feel like, is to help you move beyond those hurdles because we know that private label, it can be done the easy way. Yep. And um, so we put together these 10 ways that you are making private label the easy way hard. And we're just going to dive right in. And at the end, um, if you happen to have some something that we haven't covered, um, that would be a great time to ask questions. There's a Q and A. I don't know where it is on your screen. <laughs> Should be at the bottom. At the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any questions, you can put them in there. We'll probably address most of them at the end. Um, or if you can take some notes, we will definitely have a time for for questions because I guarantee. In fact, we even came up with a list that was longer than ten. Um, there's more ways that people get stuck. So I'd love to hear if we didn't cover the way that where you are at and maybe what's holding you back, um, bring it up at the end and we'll um, brainstorm with you a bit and help help yeah. you get over that hurdle. So yeah. let's dig in. Ryan, um, you get to kick us off. With, okay. Okay, my, it's not working. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so this should be like the one. top 10 list. Top like, 10 list. Like yeah. David Letterman, <laughs> start with number 10 and go down. We should get Matt on here with the Chewbacca mask and yes. have him read them. <laughs> That's right. No. Okay, so um, number one. Yep, and go there ahead. will be a replay of this webinar. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll post it in the, in the group. Um, worry about having the wrong product. Um, go, all right, well, next one. Let's go down. So a lot of people th are afraid that they, the product they choose is not going to be the right one, not going to be a good one. Just get over it. I mean, honestly, there's just so many products. Just, it's more, I'm learning so much from Abe and Mike about the keywords that um, it's really more about the keywords, guys. And, and the products are so much less important. Um, the keywords are the gold. You can find the products to match the keywords that uh, that are the real, you know, as we talk about, you know, Abe being the data mining expert. Um, so find the products afterwards. That's one way to do it. Um, if you have a product that you're already interested in and you take it through the process and you think it's going to be good um, and it turns out it's not, it's really okay. I mean, because you're just trying to get to to one a good one, five good ones, whatever your goals are. Don't worry about it if the first one's not the right one, if it ends up not working. As Jenny puts in this checklist here, you got some really cheap training. You likely built some relationships with suppliers and you can check that one off the list. So it's okay if your first product's not a winner. It's okay if it's a complete loser. Um, you know, failure doesn't mean the game is over. It just means try again. And you, you learned a lot of, you gained some great experience um, from doing it. So 
please don't let um, don't get so focused on having the absolute win winning product. We tell people in the mastermind group that just um, just pick something and go through the process, take it through the validation steps and, and see if it works. And if it doesn't, it's okay. Um, we all have products that are duds and you just, you cut those losses and you move on to the next one. Yeah. And I'm going to be able to add to that, that, yeah. uh, you know, my first few, well, I did, I did what I call exclusive bundles. So I put together a couple of products that I thought would uh, be complimentary. They sold well. It seemed like the most prominent. This was, this was years ago. This was before I really knew what I was doing, uh, but I see it seemed promising. I put one or two items with them that uh, were private label that I had made together. And it took, I, I, I only did 10, you know, I thought I'm just going to test it. That's what I do. I just want to test it. I don't want to put too much money into it. And you know, it took them like six months before 10 of them sold. <laughs> so clearly I had a bad they eventually did sell and I set them at a price that was probably a little bit too high, but um, I had two, I had two bundles like that. So um, I'm sure that all of us could probably go through and talk about some of the failures that we've had, but they're not total failures. They did sell, sell. They just weren't to the degree that you, that I had originally hoped right. for right. That's something they were 10 a day. So, you know, you have to kind of take it up to there's so much that I learned from that. So I just wanted Absolutely. to add. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. And you know, I'll, I'll jump in too, because, um, Guys, if you're in the mentoring group, you have access to, to vetted wholesalers that you don't have to ask, and you can source their products and take their product out of their box and put it in your own, very simply, right? I know we'll get into all this, but you can simply source their products and put a bundle together. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I did a long time ago, just totally naive in the trade, and, and, and I put two products that I found on the shelf together into a bundle as my first exclusive listing. But now we can go into wholesalers and do the same thing. Um, you know, you don't have to overthink it and, you know, launch the best product there is. And the reason why I love bundling so much is you can test out two products and in your title key in on two different types of keywords for both products mm -hmm. and see, you know, see what comes back when you run your sponsored ads after you launch that product. And then you could remove one of those products and launch the single one. Mm -hmm. You could sell the bundle and you can sell both of those products, each as private labels. There's so much flexibility. I mean, just don't overthink the process. I mean, you could launch a number of these and then, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you launch say three or four, you know, two do well, the rest don't, but you keep those two that are doing well and then you move on and just recycle the process. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So when I um, when first started, I had more experience. Well, I don't have more now, but um, I started out with eBay, actually started with Amazon years ago, selling books and then um, went to eBay and totally burned out on um, customer fulfillment. And when I went to uh, move to FBA, I had such a huge mental block to learning a new process. And I think that if you can do eBay, you can do Amazon FBA. Oh, gosh, but, yes. I mean, it's so much simpler. And, mm -hmm. um, but still, and I knew that logically, but I needed to, to change my thinking to be able to get over that hurdle. And what helped me was to take a step back and go, okay, you know, who cares if it's a total flop? Who cares any of that? I'm going to use this specifically to just train me and get this underneath my belt. I've got to get past this hurdle. And then I'll focus on really looking for the, better products and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with private label. I think that if you can have a mind shift from, I'm not going to worry about the product right now. I'm going to worry about being trained and about learning the process. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it that way, that kind of takes, that takes that hurdle away. It takes that pressure off of having to find the, the um, right product. And with Ryan's, the, with the um, private label, the easy way, you don't have a high risk uh, financially as well. So. Can I ask the uh, devil advocate's question real quick? I'm going to be like the, the reporter that asked the hard right <laughs> way. I want to drive deep for the truth, right? So my question is, okay, when I first heard this, and I was like, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Test things out. But the question I always came back to is, okay, which product do I even test? Like, what do I, what do I mm -hmm. test? Like, what product mm -hmm. do I get that says, hey, let's we'll just go for it and try it out? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's just that. You know, I think people are, are down okay. with the fact that you can get 10 of these things or five of these and make a bundle, send it in. So I think, you know, um, testing part, we'll get more into as this course goes on, I think with some of the tools that we all use to do it. But I think, I think what I like, I know, I, I think we should do a survey. Like how many people are working full-time jobs versus you know, a full-time home? And for me, I have like, my time is my biggest asset. I have so many mm -hmm. things going on. And I think, I like that private level in the box. I like, I like the vet opportunities. Here's a product that I can get right now. If I vet it and I send it in, is there a chance that it can sell? Right. It's completely worth the try because, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to save me about 10 hours of work in my time. They're rolling in. Right. 
Mm -hmm. Who knows? Gonna, it may work for you. I, I use betting strategies. Is there, can I run ads and make it work? Will my keywords get me there as far as um, placement and optimization? And I like that a lot better. I think a lot of mind power goes into like, what's the product I even test? You know, what's that one yep. product? That's true. You know, such a huge catalog full of stuff, you know? And, um, you know, this, this whole thing is kind of like running ads a lot of times. If you're kind of testing items and, and using your best strategies and probabilities to make it possibly work. But I don't go into it thinking I'm going to make money on my first, my first testing area. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if it's going to work or not. And if it is, mm -hmm. then I get more into my sourcing. But I think for me, I'm excited about private level in the box. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about things that are coming down the pipe as far as um, some of these opportunities just to look at them and say, hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for it. Because some people are really good at finding stuff. And some people have a hard time just finding stuff and, and, it's, and it burns them out. And I, that's mm -hmm. kind of both ways. I'm good at finding stuff and I just have time to do it sometimes. Mm -hmm. so for me, if I can use pre-existing products and check it out and say, hey, this could work, and maybe bundle it something very easily, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to be going through wholesale. We're going to do an online arbitrage combo deal, whatever it's going to mm -hmm. be. You can all throw it together and, and put it in there. But fast as you can get them up initially, I like it because you're just going to test this stuff in the beginning mm -hmm. until you actually get yeah. a winning product that you're going to you know, carry on and scale up down the road. That's kind of my question is, you know, what's that, that product you want to go with as a test product? And I think that's one of the questions we got to also put out there and, and answer. Right. Well, let me answer that real quick. I mean, it, I could go for an hour about that. Um, and, but Jenny and I are working on a, um, actually some of you guys in the leadership team have helped me out with it, with ideas. Um, I got somebody working on an infographic of just a, a mind map type of thing where, so essentially, and I'll, I'll share with the group as soon as I have it back, it should be really, really soon. Um, but essentially there's so many different ways to find products and to start with one, there's a, you can start, I mean, one idea is, so basically it comes down to, and Ginny came up with this, it's either customer driven or it's a, a debt or a, what's product, product driven. Mm -hmm. So when you think of a product driven, it's find a product and then uh, find the people that will buy it or uh, customer driven, look at what customers are already searching for and then find the product. So if we start with the, the customer driven, that is um, Abe's data mining workshop. So he's talking about in that how to use keyword inspector keyword inspector to look for trends and see what people are already searching for. You find a trend, then you find the product. So that's one way. Then the other way is the product driven. This is what most private label courses teach. And several different ways to do that are things you're interested in, things you're knowledgeable about, things that are local to you, uh, things that, uh, what are your low hanging fruit, those types of questions, what are you already selling well? Um, so there's two different angles and ways to go at it. Honestly, just pick something. If you have an interest in something, find a source, get it, get it into Amazon and, and test it. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do Abe's method and do some more research and see what people are searching for first, that's fine too. It all comes down to though, just find, just selecting something and not being married to it, thinking that, you know, this is going to be your winner. It's really all about the process and you're going to find one, two, three, four that do really well. So mm -hmm. um, we, we'll d dig into that more um, for sure. Right. And we, we've, we've talked about that a lot with um, in some of the other webinars and all, all of the tools really want to focus the, on the things if this is holding you back, don't let it. That's really what we want to address. So if you're stuck at worrying about having the wrong product or working, worrying about having the right product, don't get stuck there. Just get, I think Mike bringing up private label in a box. Awesome. Because there are vetted products in there that you, you know, that's a great place to just pick one and try it and get through yep. that, get over that fear so that you can move on to the next step and, and keep moving. And then when you pick that one, you actually can focus on Abe stuff, you know, as far as right. the, uh, you know, the keywords and all that, the trends and mm -hmm. things like that. Then you can move on to the stuff that really makes sense in Amazon. Um, as far as once you get a product out there, you can see how the process works as far as advertising, as well as what keywords are making it go. And it all starts to make sense when you start seeing that happen. Mm -hmm. so that initial product out there, even does, if it flops completely and stinks, um, we're okay with that because that's where, you know, our, our first, our, our test products are supposed to just give us data and we mm -hmm. try to work off it. Sometimes you can get products that do well right off the box and you're right out of the box that can sell. Mm -hmm. But really my main goal is to find out what's, what's going on with it and, and mm -hmm. either, even pivot and either add something else to it or a whole different product that meets those keywords. But, uh, you know, what, what Abe does too as well is uses um, those keywords to even give you a possibility of doing well in the first one. So this is a process. Yep. to uh, move forward but yeah definitely just get something 
Whoever it's hard to find something, you use private level in the box. It's, if you want to source yourself, you want to do your own thing, go ahead and, and do it's mm -hmm. make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, let me let me just say something about private label in the box because Ryan, I know you know I, I love this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when you when you join private label in the box, they they vetted the wholesalers so that the wholesalers allow you to take their product out of their box and put it in your own without asking them. So they have products lined up pre-vetted. You can simply order one. Just like you, you know, you fill out a wholesale account, takes, I don't know, a few minutes, right? You order something, it comes to your house, you take it out of their box, you put it in yours, you <laughs> slap a sticker on it, you have a private label. Done. <laughs> there you go. Like that, that's it. It, it. It's like within a week, you can do this. Yeah. You know, just pick a product and then you can do your keyword research after you have it and find out you know, how to market that to the customers. In what way are they searching for it? Mm -hmm. um, what space can you go in and compete with? Or just launch it and run ads and then see what comes back from <laughs> Amazon that tells you where to target that. Yep. So, I mean, and I also want to say too, Abe, thanks for joining in and talking about the um, uh, private label box. Guys, this is not a commercial for private label. <laughs> Please don't it's, think that at all. Uh, um, you know, and you guys, you guys drive me crazy that it's not mentioned enough because it's so, awesome it's so unbelievable i i'm into that thing like every day yeah That's awesome. <laughs> just, yeah just the simple fact that you've led me to so many wholesalers that i can just take my product out of their box and put it in mine when i don't have to ask them yep. i mean take all, that, time. take all that confusion out of it mm -hmm. you know those emails that you have to send and hope that they're okay with it right okay, yeah you know count me in <laughs> well, said, go ahead and play <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so we um, it's already seventeen after, yeah, and this is probably on number two. We better. Uh, but that was a good segue right into um number two. Don't okay. the the you know we're talking ten ways you're making private label the easy way hard. So your number two is that you don't trust the data, and um, of course we've I can't switch slides. There we go. Um, we've got Abe, our no. data mining expert, to touch on that one. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean, don't trust the data. Let me tell you exactly what I do when I start to look for a product every single time. I completely wipe my mind of any thoughts about a product. I, I, I pretend that I don't see anything. I don't know what I'm going to sell at all. And I start to, you know, go through and mine the data. And of course, yes, I use Keyword Inspector. You actually don't have to use Keyword Inspector. You can use the Amazon search bar. There's several other tools that you can use. I mean, merchant words you could use to get started, you know, but I put in my requirements and I open a little data, a little window into Amazon search terms and I go through um, certain criteria. Um, you know, I look for generic, non-branded. I look for search terms that make sense that a customer would actually write in the search box. Uh, and then that leads me to Amazon's product page where I start to validate the search terms. I want to see that there's some sponsored ads maybe running on the page. Uh, you know, I want to see people keying in on the search term in their titles. Uh, you know, I want to see relevant products to the search term that I've, I'm looking in. You know, and that leads me, and that kind of validates the search term there. Uh -huh. And I start digging for products. I look for what's selling well. It has good reviews. What listings can I compete against? You know, and all this data leads me to a specific product or product niche that I can then uh -huh. start to, you know, dig into. And then, th then I just go and source a, a wholesaler. Who's what type of wholesaler is selling that product? What product can I build into that search term? If is it a bundle? You know, can I build a bundle into that search term? Can I add value to existing products? Mm -hmm. You know, this is all this all these like um, you know boxes that you check as you go through data mining lead you to a product. So you know, I made I I mean, there's there's search terms that you could not even make up that I found that lead to decent products, you know, that lead to really good niches that have search volumes and you'd never guess, you know, in markets that I would never sell in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I love following the data so much. So Abe, I, I just want to, I want to pop in really quick cause I want to uh, sure. ask you to note. Um, so we've had some people talk about, um, you know, there's the data that you can find on a different site. So there's merchant words and there's a uh, keyword, yeah. um, uh, uh, keyword trends and, and, mm -hmm. and, 
specs there. Um, there's the information that when you just start typing into the Amazon search bar. So anyway, um, what are the ways, I don't know if you want to talk about how, how you can sort of cross-reference those and validate mm -hmm. those. Um, just, you know, using Mike's, we've all stolen this, control F, his little fun mm -hmm. thing. Yes. <laughs> No, no, if you talk to that, because a lot of people do use different tools. Control yeah. M now. Yeah, so, um, so like I said, I check off different like validation points as I kind of go along. Um, you know, and I, I do start with usually keyword inspector, but um, you know, when I look at search volume, I know it's not completely accurate. Uh -huh. So you should cross-reference cross -reference that with a couple other tools, like you know, plug it into Merchant Words. Plug it into, uh, you know, key, was it uh, KW Finder or Keyword Finder and Google? Mike, Mike um, talked about this tool and mm -hmm. it works for itself. Um, so, like, in between those three, if you at least see some volume somewhere, uh, you know, that could be, you know, validation there. But mostly, there are other data points that you can look for besides the volume, the search volume, because it's not always accurate. Like, when I go to the Amazon first page and I see that people have targeted sponsored ads at the top of the page, well, I know that they've probably already done some research and are targeting that search term. Mm -hmm. I see the relevancy ads on the right telling you that Amazon is targeting that because people have a search term in their back end or whatever other reason. I also look for, are people targeting the search term in their title or bullets? Mm -hmm. You know, and you can use Mike's little trick, control F. You know, he's got ownership of that now because he's the, he, that's Trade what I learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but, you know, when I plug that in, I see, are people targeting that in their title? Well, there's another validation point for me, mm -hmm. right? Are the products relevant that come up in the page? What's the majority of relevancy on the first page compared to the search term you've typed in? And there's another validation point for me. Mm -hmm. And then I start to mine the products. What products are selling well? Do they have good reviews? Uh, overall, how's the market? Like, you know, we always talk about you want to see, you know, about half of the half of the top ten with less than fifty reviews. You want to see about, you know, a, you know, a couple thousand sales between all the products that are on the top of the page. You know, you look at these uh -huh. different validation points, and and all these as you check these boxes off leads you to incredible products. You know, if you could just, you know, you just analyze these simple steps, and and Christy has helped me out a lot with this because my brain goes all over the place, and she's made me like create these mind maps of like like specific uh you know flow charts where i can like go down this so now i've been able to like organize my brain around it and i've gotten much better at it and i she's laughing but this awesome. actually did help me i think i sent ryan a, a a picture of a mind map i did on my uh my yes. wall on my whiteboard it yes was just, it was just completely nuts but it works i mean to go through these check this checklist of validation points leading you to a product and the chances of that product being successful are much greater after you do things like this. So this is how I pick my product. And then, you know, I make a great listing I make sure that my listing is going to be um, much better than any of my competitors. But then I launch and then it goes into Mike's method where I start running uh, sponsored ads and I start mm -hmm. collecting data from the search term reports and I see what search terms are working what aren't working, what I want to target, you know, what I want to get away from, or maybe I'm going to change my product. Maybe I'm going to add a complimentary product to it uh, and create a new listing with a bundle and target something else. You know, so there's, there's just a lot of maneuverability there. But as long as you have that, if you collect that space that customers are searching for, you can start to build your product into that, you know, so it becomes more than just selecting a product. You know, you're selecting a niche. So, yeah. Uh, so that <laughs> that's awesome. And, you know, Abe has, we have two, there's two um, data mining webinars that Abe um, yeah. did with Ryan. And the first one is in the mentoring group. And um, I'm, the next second one will be available um, sometime soon. But um, there you go. <laughs> you can answer the point about Mike's methods too. So, uh, um, right. I just before we move on, I, so we're talking about simplifying this, like this whole thing is like you're overthinking it. And there was a lot of information that was sort of given out there right. by Abe. But really, it is, it's following the data and validating it. Yep. So not all data is 100% accurate. And so you've really got to cross-reference that. So making sure whenever you do think that you've found a good search term, make sure that there's actually people searching for it. Make sure, right. go to Amazon look for that. Make sure that other people, someone else has to have put that in their title or in their bullet. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to tell me that 50,000 people are searching for this on a monthly basis and no one has it in their title. There's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. um, 
validate it. So follow the data and then validate that. So there was a lot of tips that Abe just gave there, but it's actually very simple. He just had a lot of different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And he, he, had, he had data. Anything prior to sponsored ads is probability. So if you're doing search volume, mm -hmm. it's possible. If you're doing keyword landing zones and control F, it's just probabilities. It's like picking a stock. If I know the financials, there's a good chance it may do well, but we don't, mm -hmm. we're not really sure yet until we actually pick it. So when you list the product, and, and we're talking about running sponsored ads, that's when you get back a lot of data that's concrete right. on that basis. If you're running ads, you're getting concrete data. So we're having the pre-data and the post-data. The pre-data is what we're talking about now is probabilities, and it's putting our product listing in the best possible place in front of the millions of uh, customers that Amazon has. Mm -hmm. And we run the ads, from Amazon, that gives us the, data, the concrete data back telling us where it's okay. going. And it gets yeah. even deeper than that. So right now, it, that's why it's so important to launch a product and get it there, because there's a process you have to go through. And even this is a, you know, you, you break even, you lose a few dollars. It's, it's the amount of information you're gonna gather by doing this is this, it's just it's critical. You have to do it and get something out there because it's yeah. a really a step-to-step -step scenario. So the data is gonna tell you things um, this is the reason why it's so popular now prior to Amazon's terms of service when we had promotions, we'd give away things for a dollar per review. It's changed everything. Now all this is becoming a little more skill level than where before you just give away a product, get a review and crank it up and, and promo it. So now we really have to learn uh, keywords and, and, and looking at uh, that data as far as ads, looking at different tools the best we can. So. This is all following a process, and when you do a product mm -hmm. listing, it's all going to make sense as you do this. Mm -hmm. And actually, in a funny way, or ironic, I guess it kind of leads into the next one, Mike. Um, number three, you think you have to know it all before you start. And Mike was saying it's a, this is a process, so you really you don't have to have the whole know every piece of the process before you start. Focus on the beginning, get that, then you move on to the next step, and you get that. Just follow follow the process, but I think a lot of people can get overwhelmed. Um, and uh, Barrington uh, McIntosh has a great quote, and I had it wrong earlier today, but it's nothing to it but to do it. I'm sure you guys have heard, if you've been to CES or yeah. if you know Barrington at all, he says that in almost every conversation I have with him. <laughs> it's awesome. So um, You have to go to the bathroom, nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. right? <laughs> so I do it. I'll tell you, I, I, I want to I want to say something about you know you have to know everything before you start because you're you're never going to start if you try to learn everything. Yeah. Right. So the thing is that nobody is, you know, even no when you start you have to start somewhere, yep. and naturally as you do this time after time, you get better at everything you do in your life. The first time you ever did something, you were not the best. But, you know, the 10th, 15th, 20th time, you naturally get better at doing it. So we're, I think where the value comes in is starting to build a, a repeatable process for yourself, right? So you, you, get, you, you, you line up the steps to get there. You start to work the steps. And then every time you rework the steps, you, ref, you, you get better and better at each step. And you refine each step. And you can, you know, you can add steps. You can take steps away that are, that are not working for you. But... Every time you do this, as you refine this process, you get to the uh, you get to the goal, you know, mm -hmm. faster. But also, you get to a much better finished product each time. And like for me, I started data mining a year ago, and I didn't really even understand what I was doing yet, right? But now, when I I just all the stuff that I just went through on the last data mining piece, I do that in minutes, just naturally in my mind as I look at a page. I don't even think about the process. It's, it's almost like muscle memory at this point. Mm -hmm. That was not the case when I first started doing exclusive products. I had almost no idea what I was doing. I was just launching stuff and God, you know, thank God I didn't get my like account suspended. But, uh, you know, but I repeated the process and I just got much better at it and I learned new things every time. I mean, if you just look, if you look at the transition from a couple of months from the first data mining a workshop we did to the second. I mean, my process got better just in that short time. And even today, it's better than when I did data mining too. Awesome. Because I'm constantly adding new techniques, learning new things, meeting new people, networking with people that know more than I do, and I learn from them. And it's just a constant building process. I mean, that's business. That's, that's right. Business. 
Well, you know what? Oh. That's a good point, Abe, because, you know, the thing is, people who know how to do it, you just copy them. Why well, you got to well, reinvent the wheels? I was going to copy Abe. Why do you think we put these workshops out? Copy us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, and, and yeah, use, use somebody else's success as a template for your own is really what you're doing. <laughs> Learn from what they're doing. Awesome. I also just want to say the theme here that we've just touched on everything, the just do it, the pull the trigger, the test it out, the learn from your mistakes, all of this can be done. I want to reframe this to this is private label the easy way, mm -hmm. not the private label that is, you know, go to China, you have to buy five million things at one time, you have to send it over. It's this is all framed within you're able to do that with the easy way method. Mm -hmm frame of mind that we're trying to change for people here, um, it, uh, that, that, it, that you can test, you can try, you can do small portions and right. test out and read the data when you do this method. You can't always do that if you're spending, you know, $10,000 right. on a product that you're going really deep in because you have mm -hmm. another choice. So again, this is just taking a step back that this is all capable and uh, 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 um, possible with the easy way method. So yep. that's an excellent point. So easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're at six thirty, and we're hitting number four. <laughs> no. yeah, okay. we, this ha this happens with us. We just we go all night. Don't well, there's we? and it, and you know, honestly, we could probably do a webinar on each one of them. <laughs> you guys skip me, by the way. So whatever. I'm sorry. Do you want to add anything there? No, I think I said I think I said I'd be on like step two by accident. So. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that, so I skipped you. No, I'm just kidding. Awesome. Okay, so um, ten ways. You're making private label the easy way hard. Number four, you're, you get stuck on choosing a logo um, or a package. And, I, you know, I have a little bit of a graphic design background. And, um, when, you know, when the web first came out and in the mid-90s, and I got kind of got into the whole web development, and everything was those flashy animated GIFs and, like, put as many as you can on there and, you know, all of the new whatever. And then that went away. And... I guess um, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in what's the in, in just making the look be find a certain I'm sorry follow a certain trend uh, and and I, I want to encourage you to take a step back and I really like Mike's um, message in the webinar we did with him where he talks about he doesn't even put a logo on his his um, product so one of the things I think to um, that might help is thinking how important really is your logo and your packaging to this people aren't going to, um, they're not looking on the shelf at your packaging. They're looking online at your product. And um, no matter how fancy your packaging or your logo is, if you're not on the right product, then it's not going to matter. So um, really need to be focusing on finding the right product. And I, I put this graphic, the doggy yoga mats on there because um, I don't, I mean, maybe those will sell. I don't know. Yoga, yoga mats are a little saturated, but um, the point is, is that you can have a, a great logo to go with something, but you got to have a good, it's really all in the product and not so much. Don't get caught. And in private label in a box, and I really don't, don't mean to plug it, but there are, what we did um, is we just put some very generic logos together that you can just take them and use them. And it doesn't even matter if everybody in there uses the same logo. We don't care because we're not interested in that. We're not going to go, you have the rights to use them. And um, honestly, nobody's going to, no, none of the customers are going to care either. They're going to care when they're looking on Amazon, they're looking at the product. They're not looking at the logo and they're not looking at the packaging so much. So yeah, uh, when, I get, when I get super fancy, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make, make my store logo. If your store's called a certain thing, you can go to Vistaprint, print out the store logo. If you really want to have a logo of some sort or, or some kind of some kind of label, mm -hmm. you can print out your store label. That way you feel it's somewhat legit, right? Mm -hmm. Print out a store label from Vistaprint and just stick them on your poly bags. Like here's one here I have. Uh, this is a, a, a private label practice bundle, they call them, because they're not sure it's going to sell. And I, I, get, mm -hmm. I think it's going to do okay. So I put together this poly bag, right? I put my suffocation stickers on here. And if I want to stick a sticker of my store, for instance, or my, my business logo, I can put it right here if I want to. Right. So my big fancy thing is about a poly bag. And my stuff's inside the right. poly bag. This, this is actually a, a plastic bag holder. And inside of here is a bundle. It's like a, um, it holds mops, handles, and all that. So I threw it together. So I sold this away a year ago. It sold pretty good. And then I, I sold quite a few of these. And then basically it was a little too heavy. I kind of got away from it. But this is one that did okay. It wasn't great. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is just a bag, a poly mm -hmm. bag. 
I sealed it. I threw something inside of it, and I threw my stickers on it. If I want to put my corporate logo here, I could. I could right. call it something if I want to, but, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't know what's going to do. I think right. I didn't do it because they didn't sell that many of these. This wasn't a great one. It did all right. Mm -hmm. But if I spent all the whole time designing a, a beautiful logo for it, a package for it, all these different things, and it didn't do anything, I, w I wasted a lot of time. So I did that before when I did another bundle. And I did. I made a fancy like logo or the pet thing. And it didn't sell. Like, what's the point of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? All stuff sells. I'm not putting any time into it. So I'm going to go, it's like this. Here's my fancy PL yep. bundle right here. And really, have you ever seen stuff come from Amazon that you bought when it comes yeah. in? I mean, seriously. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> no, so, Mike, don't. real quick, we're getting some questions in there. I know Jenny said to hold them to the end, but this one's timely for this exact topic. Um, so, people are asking about um, what would you put on the listing, on the Amazon listing in the brand area when you're just testing a product? Yeah, I basically call the brand. I make it up. So, whatever brand I want to call. So <laughs> okay. Mike's, Mike's um, you know, <laughs> So whatever call I want to call it, it doesn't. It, it's, it's, awesome. right there because it's your UPC. Now, if I'm using a brand that's pretty, it's well known, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like restricted. Uh -huh. I have a brand, right? And it's another brand. I would have to list that in, and also not restricted. You would put that in the product features, naming what they are. But mm -hmm. you're still creating the UPC. So your bundle. It's kind of like man, it's kind of like a, a pseudo private label because mm -hmm. you're using a brand and another brand. It's that you can't right. you can't be using ones that are restricted. So some people, so if they're really brands that kind of know a little bit, I may not do the, I may not pull, I might flip them out. I'll keep them there because that mm -hmm. works too. Mm -hmm. So, but in this case, this is really generic. I mean, I got a generic mm -hmm. thing inside there from this. This, this mock hole is from a Walmart listing. I didn't have a name on it, so I got that from Walmart. It wasn't even a wholesale source. It was super cheap, mm -hmm. and I got this from IKEA. Mm -hmm. And had no name on it either. It was just all generic stuff brewed together. Boom, I got a private label. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, and if I wanted to add a sticker, my own sticker, and call this the brand below, you could. But what everybody do, does basically, I think everybody does is pretty much is basically names a brand. And you can make it to where it's category specific, like, you know, right. Mike's Home Kitchen, whatever, or Mike's, right. you know, and that way you, you, you can all this, you have brand name captures everything in that category. So if I want to do like, um, I would call, my generic name for everything. I make it category specific. That way, anytime mm -hmm. you test the bundle in that category, you have a brand name for it. Mm -hmm. It starts to go into the same brand. So if I do Mike's, you know, Mike's, uh, you know, um, Mike's uh, storage, Mike's mm -hmm. storage supplies, whatever, mm -hmm. anything that falls in that category in home and kitchen for storage, I can stick under that brand name. Right. And the brand name, you know, until I start selling these things and, you know, I got an actually private label and, you know, you can always change it, you know. What's right. going to happen, the next question is, what happens if you sell these things and you go back and change it? What do you do with the uh, listing? You got to do a li new listing again, which I don't care because, you know, I'm only testing five of these things, you know what I mean? Mm. I just want to know it's working. So you may have to change your listing. Now, if this sells really well, I just keep doing it over and over and over. I'll keep the same listing. Okay. Sometimes I'll pivot and I'll add a different bundle to it. Mm -hmm. and I'll the listing. That's why I do small quantities. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's going on before I get into this whole or or ordeal of mm -hmm. uh, building out stuff like that. But I think looking as I go forward, I'm going to put my business store name on the front right. of the label. That way right. somebody says, oh, I bought it from so-and-so because you're going to send me an email saying, how'd you like it? Blah, blah, blah. So you see your store name. You might as well stick it on there as a sticker, as a store name. If you want to get extra fancy, you can put the brand on the same label underneath it. And right. It that way. Right. Okay? So that's, that's how people are doing it pretty much. Yeah. If you're getting the next level, you start going a little bit further into it. Yep. And then, you know, you made a really good point with what are you getting from Amazon? I think that people um, are so familiar with not having fancy packaging from the things that come from Amazon. And in fact, a lot of people choose the frustration free packaging, you know, mm -hmm. so um, it, it's just the whole point. Don't let it get you stuck. It's not that important at the, it's, 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 it's at the beginning. I mean, it comes with dents in it. You get stuff from Sears. It's like completely dented. Yeah. I mean, you get right. things like from, uh, you know, Walmart's got a little better. But the bottom line is that, you know, as I did my first product label, I was so hung up on like doing this perfect, you know, product label and this whole layout. And really, I think it would have worked better in a brown box. I think I probably put it in yeah. a brown box and probably been fine with it because you're not selling it to a retail store. You're selling it to the end consumer. But yeah. I think in the end, you have a nice product. You want to definitely improve. Once you know it's going to sell, it's a proven product, then you want to invest your yeah. time in the labeling. Because it's going to help conversions, do better reviews. Yeah. In the very, very beginning, until you don't know yet, you don't know what you have. 
Mm -hmm. You know what you have, and then you know it's going to work. Then you make the investment in the artwork, and that's why my, my, my good private labels I know work. They're nicely done. Right. So now, now I'm going to spend time doing it. Right. I've been really aggravated if I spent about you know seven hundred dollars on a listing, a bunch of pictures, and I only sold like nine of these things. Yeah, know. that was. <laughs> so that's why I really learned out right away why well, I'm, I'm just going to do whatever else does it and put it out there and see how it goes and make sure it's under Amazon's term of service. You're not, you're not, right. you're not messing with that. And, uh, you know, if you're doing OA and RA, you're, you're, you're kind of in the gray area, let's face it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think PDL is still a lot cleaner, any way you put it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's. I, I have a lot of things that I wanted to say there. Yeah. You kind of covered it all. I just, the one burning question I have, Jenny, is it GIF or is it GIF? Because I really don't know. Oh, I always say GIF. I always hear it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So I said it and I've just been, it's been on my mind for like five minutes now. So. That's funny. <laughs> I can be educated along with it. Though. I don't know. I've always said gift yeah, from the get-go. I don't know. That's funny. That's funny. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Let's move on because we're halfway through. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <We'll, wait. laughs> Better hurry. I'll make mine quick unless okay. somebody else chimes in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Number five. So let me go back. Ten ways you're making private label the easy way hard. You ask suppliers if you can private label, private label, their product. Okay, this is a big one. And the more I get into this, the more I see people get stuck here. They go and they ask a wholesaler, can I private label your product? Or do you have a private label program? And what the supplier hears is, will you help me create and print my graphics on custom packaging for your products? And that's going to shut down probably half of your, if not more, um, half of your wholesalers. Okay, so you're going to want to ask, this is key, you're going to want to ask Ryan's magic question, okay? And um, this is the whole thing of private label the easy way. It will open up doors that you just won't have open um, any other way. The question is, can I take your product out of its package and put it into my own? Okay? And they say, okay, because they're very excited because they don't have to do any work on their end. What are they, they saying? Okay. They say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, seriously, I think Ryan said one out of all the people he's talked to has said no. Mm -hmm. and, and who knows if they even really understood what he was asking, but right. um, they probably just had the standard answer. But, you know, you, you start bringing up private label and use that terminology. They're thinking something totally different than what you're asking. And so it's very important to ask, Ryan's magic question. Can I take your product out of its package and put it in my own packaging or in my own? Okay. Um, okay. There it is. Comes up. <laughs> Write it down, put it uh, in your script. Make, there's a template in the um, Facebook group that mm -hmm. you can use. That's a script. If it you like tattoos, put it, tattoo it on your arm. That's right. <laughs> so you don't forget at a trade show. <laughs> there you go. What's anyway. So, um, that is just key. I, I, I still, even though people know that, they still are asking that you're thinking private label means something different. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it might make sense to go there if sometimes when you're looking for a supplier, you might look for a supplier, um, you know, and put in private label in your search terms. You might look for a company that actually has that service, but that's not necessary. And so um, be careful if you're getting shut doors from wholesalers when you're approaching them, what's the question that you're asking them? Okay. Yeah. Can I take your product out of its package and put it in my own? Um, all right, let's move on. 10 ways you're making private label the easy way hard. Number six, I don't know where I am in my notes. There we go. Um, <laughs> you're stuck. You stuck when you can't find a supplier. What in the world do you do? And, uh, Ryan and Christy are going to take this one. We are. All right. Cool. Well, for me, if I can't find a supplier, I'll probably just move on. Because if I've done all the searches I possibly can and still can't find it, just go to, go to another product. I don't like sourcing from China. Um, I, I would pretty much guarantee if you can't find it in the United States, you'll find it overseas. But I don't like to do that. Um, there is an option like with AliExpress, which Christy told me, taught me a lot about AliExpress. And you can get very small quantities um, using AliExpress. And not, it's a division of Alibaba. You don't have to order thousands. You can order like one. Um, so there, I, I would imagine there's going to be a supplier um, that you can get it from, even if it has to be AliExpress. But if you absolutely cannot find it anywhere, just move on to another product. Um, it's, you know, this is the easy way method. Method. There are millions of products, so mm -hmm. uh, don't get stuck at this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's if you're going the wholesale route or, or even going the AliExpress route, which I, I guess we could talk about, but really, um, so a lot of uh, what I do and where I source is from promotional companies. And mm -hmm. so, uh, most people know promotional companies to be something like a Vista print, uh, but there are thousands of them out there mm -hmm. that any other things besides that. It's that's the popular one, so I use it as an example. Um, but the beauty of using them is, let's say you have an idea of a product, and let's say it's um, like a, I do a lot with pets, so pet, like water, food, bowl, okay? So you have an idea, your data has told you this is, this is a good product. You can actually call up or email, I'm a call person, you can email. Uh, you can call them up and say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, a, a dog, uh, cat, pet, water bowl, a set, or whatever. You don't have to know exactly what your product is. Or you could have loose parameters. And they can do research for you. So mm -hmm. That's right. Something that maybe uh, not all wholesaler sale companies can do. In fact, right. I don't know of them, but mm -hmm. right, you would know better. Wholesale uh, companies won't do that for you, no. Right. But <laughs> in their catalog, because can go online and look at their catalog but i mean sometimes some of the bigger companies have i mean hundred um, i'm gonna go fifty thousand products maybe more than that i don't know but it would, it would be before you saw all of them so um what they're able to do is uh do some research for you so i i say that also that i probably would not call them up and be like hey i'm looking for a, a pet bowl product what research can you do for me like i probably not go that route uh, I have a pretty good idea but the point is they can help you they can sort of help you and be a partner with you mm -hmm. them, not, not all companies do that um, you know certain promotional companies I bucket them in two different kinds if it's online versus a relationship type mm -hmm. um, relationship type ones so this to print everything's online you go mm -hmm. you serve if you are able to self-serve you're likely not going to find a rep that's going to be able to do that for you. But if they want you to con contact them, mm -hmm. uh, let's go into this in a lot of detail with the website before, but the point is, if you're having trouble, there are people out there that can help you find them if you think it's something that it can, it can be purchased through a promotional company. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Good, awesome. good stuff. Yep. That's... There we go. I don't know why that's not working. All right. So we're going to go on number seven. Um, we're looking at 10 ways you're making private label the easy way hard. Number seven is you're afraid to approach suppliers. And this is a real fear and we should probably name the phobia, which I should look up. <laughs> that is, it is. And, and just, if you're, if you fall on this as an obstacle, you're not alone. There's so many people who are afraid to um, approach suppliers. And so Ryan, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. So what's the worst case scenario that they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're going to say no to you. Um, that's really pretty much it. Um, or you know, they're not going to, no, no, there's no, there's nothing that's scary that can happen. Um, and believe it or not, I kind of, when I go to a trade show, I kind of have to get on a roll and I usually start with a company that I have no desire to do business with and just go up mm -hmm. and talk to them to kind of get uh, in the flow. Um, and once you, talk to them, just say things like, what's your top selling products? Um, you know, just compliment them on their products. Uh, ask them how the show is going for them. Um, mm -hmm. You can even do this on the phone uh, just to build rapport. Um, and then when you get to one that you really want to do business with, um, then you're kind of already in the groove. Um, so there really isn't this. It's not scary. They need you more than um, or as much as you need them. I think, uh, I, mean, I, I think it's the other way around. Right? They, they really, I mean, they have, there's so much company. You get ASD. Uh, support, but you're yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. ASD is so huge. And there's true. so much of the same stuff everywhere. Yep. Trust me, I'm a vendor. And I'm also, I also a supplier. Uh -huh. We want to sell everything. We, we yeah. want to sell everything you want to buy. <laughs> you know, yeah. Bottom line, people want to sell this stuff. And if you go yeah. to ASD, what a great way to get practice on your game. Like Ryan said, you go to ASD or one of the smaller conventions, mm -hmm. trade mm -hmm. shows, just roll in there and say, hey, I'm an e I say I'm an e-commerce seller. So where do you sell? I sell everywhere online. I sell Amazon. I sell on Shopify, Etsy. I sell everywhere. And I'm looking for products. And, you know, why is it be Amazon? It can be e-commerce in general. You mm -hmm. know, you're you able to sell this product? Can I private label it? Yes or no? And I'll tell you, I get calls a week later saying, hey, I have a bunch of product I want to sell. Can you move <laughs> with it? You just tell them, I, I, even, I even get people who want me to list their stuff on Amazon form. I, I got a, That's awesome, yeah. A few people call me, I have a couple of calls from that, they want to do business with you. And you got to remember, you know, this, is, this isn't selling, you know, like surgical equipment. This is like commodity stuff. This is like, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, a basket or, you know, some kind of crazy <laughs> items that you really don't need. You kind of get, you know, for your mm -hmm. house. You know what I mean? So this isn't, this isn't super high-end 
items are $25 items, $30 items, you know, $15 items. So you, you got to let go of that. They, they, they want to sell to you. Trust me. Yep. They want to sell. This yeah. stuff to you. All they're worried about is if you're going to tank their pricing on Amazon, if they're on Amazon themselves, you usually have a problem on Amazon if they're on Amazon. Right. Mm -hmm. if they're not care. You know, the, the big box stores, everybody knows when I was at ASD, people were so open to e-commerce. They wanted to know how to get on it. They want to know how to get it to you and so on. He's got to get mm -hmm. confident, roll up to them. Have a business card for sure. If you go to, if you go in, in person on the phone, it's a little bit different. You have some email scripts that you use. You call on the phone, mm -hmm. and you're a buyer. You're you're buying their stuff. Yep. I mean, if you're giving me a check, I'm more nervous. Yeah, you know, yep. I'm giving them a check, so I, I feel a little yep. more confident there. Now, if somebody's paying me, it's a little different scenario. So I'm paying them, so I feel yep. confident that I'm buying it. And they don't want to take your money or do your private label. You move on to the other thousand suppliers that That's are right. out. There. So no more right. this stuff. Just go in confidence. Have a website, have an email signature, look like you're going to you have a, a good company, you know, and, and approach it and tell them what you want. You say, mm -hmm. I want this, mm -hmm. you can do it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, well, call the next person. I want this. Are you able to do it? <laughs> then the bottom line is, you're going to have, after a while, you have a late relationship. It gets really easy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I just want to say something about ASD because I, I went last year right after meeting Ryan and, and reading his book and getting into Private Label Easy Way. And, um, you know, I was kind of, I was a little bit, you know, you know, apprehensive to walk in there and start asking that question that I really didn't know much about. Um, so there was, there was two strategies that I used that I had great success. No one I asked this question to said no. So what I would do is I went from booth to booth. Now you're going to see products that are obviously branded, you know, they're selling branded items or, mm -hmm. you know, items that are, you know, there's, there's items that are sold in stores, but you could tell that they're, they're they're branded items and those aren't the people that you want to ask mm -hmm. if you can probably label the easy way, but you're going to go through like a number of them that just have generic products, you know, generic tools with some just weird brand name just for the show that they have on it mm -hmm. or, you know, kitchen items or like, you know, wicker baskets or, you know, bamboo sheets or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that you approach and, and, you know, you talk to them, show them a business card. Hey, this is our business. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we, we private label products. Would you be okay if we took your product out of, out of the packaging and put our own packaging on it or our own wrap on it or our own whatever? And all them, yeah, absolutely, not a problem. There was, and, you know, and there was one other strategy that we used is that I knew so many people at the show from the Facebook groups <laughs> so that when we walked ASD and I was talking to these vendors and, you know, I'm a personable person, you know how to talk to people. So I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, are you looking for other, other customers? Are you, I'm looking for other businesses. I'm here with a large group of That's people, awesome. all own businesses. So like, now what can I do for you to bring you business? That's so awesome. Then, we would have 20 people walk into their booth, handing out business cards, and then I could ask whatever question I wanted after that because I just yeah. delivered value to him. Yeah. So <laughs> take advantage That's of the awesome. network you built on face on Facebook and all these groups that we're in. You meet people on Facebook, but when you go to these conferences, you get to see them face to face. So mastermind with these people and use mm -hmm. that to your advantage mm -hmm. for your business. That's I mean, a it, great was a huge, it was a huge technique. I don't think you would think to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. It That's an awesome <laughs> tip. I love that. Here's my entourage, if you will. That's right. <laughs> it works. He's right. When you go in there with a group of people, it's an, it, it, it kind of intimidates the sales reps. <laughs> yeah, so if you're intimidated, just bring somebody with you. Tables, yep. and, and sales reps are really easy to get along with. I mean, you can't get along with the sales oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's not the CEO or the CFO of the company. These guys, they have to make their money. They got to sell this product to yeah. make their quarterly numbers. I was a sales guy for a long time. I'll, I would sell anything at the end of the quarter. So you know, the bottom line is you got to sell stuff. All they want to know is you're you're gonna, you're gonna take their product and handle it properly. You're gonna pay yeah. your bills. You're legitimate. You know, you're not gonna stiff them. You know, and I'm amazed in medical. I have 120 days to, to a year to pay for products. We have great terms, and this business is COD. You're not getting any deals. I mean, it's like a, you might get net 30 or mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you're paying for it right up front. So what's there to right. lose? You know? So yeah. I, I always have a little different take on it. I have, I have absolutely no fear of because I just know that in the real world, now they're giving me terms, 190 days, you know, 160 days. Okay, great. But this is a whole thing. You take your credit card out. You're gonna give right. me. You're paying for it. You just want to make sure you can do it. They're not going to hassle you later on. Right. Um, I have some companies yeah. that, you know, I want to make sure, hey, can I, can I sell this on e-commerce? There's nothing, there's nothing written somewhere that I can't do it. You want to, you want to grow the product and, and drive advertising towards it. 
they give yeah. you a problem later on. So you just have to ask up front, get out of the way, but they, they want to do business and a lot of people do. And just say you're an e-commerce seller and hopefully you sell beyond Amazon. Hopefully Amazon is your yeah. stepping stone to go beyond it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. And we, you know, I know, I think the more you do it, the less uh, fear comes into it, but um, it's, it is a real fear for a lot of people. And we have a family motto. It's do it afraid. We just do it afraid. And um, that's what courage is all about anyway. So um, you, that's how you move forward. So uh, 10 ways you're making private label the um, easy way hard. We're on number eight, overthinking the process, which I think we've really talked we've a lot about. That one. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add, Ryan. Um, um, it's not as hard as you think. Done. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's so many ways just in this group to not overthink the process. Right. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, I mean, really, it, it, you, you follow the steps and you really can't go wrong. Yep. Just keep moving. Not much to say there. <laughs> okay. Last one. You get stuck on building a product listing. Number nine, right? Number n oh, I'm sorry. Number nine. Yeah, I can nine. count. Yeah. And I homeschool. Um, <laughs> um, stuck on building a product listing. Okay. Here's the thing. Don't let it get you stuck, right? Nothing to it, but to do it. Barrington. Awesome quote. Keep moving ahead. Um, and if you don't know how you can outsource it, you can find somebody who does. And here's just a few, um, few, few ideas here. And then Abe, I'll let you take over if you have anything to add. Uh, don't know how you can outsource. You can um, go to Fiverr, find someone who can write a copy for your Amazon listing. You can um, look on the Facebook group, ask someone there. Um, you can find someone who can take pictures or who can edit your pictures or software that does that. It's not that difficult. Um, but Fiverr is a great resource. Uh, look at what other people have done successfully use it as a template for your own success. And then again, in private label in a box, there's a template that Abe put together um, that's for creating a listing. So um, here's Fiverr.com. Um, and I think we have a code or something now that I think about it. That's on the bonus uh, page. Yeah, we, um, yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> they, they, they Fiverr stopped doing that. So. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. we'll see if we can get some sort of deal there, but it's still five bucks to start, right. you know, a thing. It's not a big deal. Um, again, ask someone in the uh, Facebook group. Is there someone in this group who's skilled with creating product listings on Amazon? Ryan and I know a couple people in there um, who are really good and will work with you. So um, check out private label in a box. Um, this is the front page of the membership portal um, portal there for you. So really, honestly, if you're stuck at um, make, building a listing, especially, uh, I think it's just that, think, ask yourself, am I just making up excuses? There's, there's no excuse. There's no way, no reason for you to not be able to move forward. Everything is in the um, mentoring program. We are there to support you and to help you. And mm -hmm. um, I, I really liked this question. Are your excuses more important than your dreams? And when I'm really honest, you know, I'm, I, with myself, I'm, it really, they are excuses. They're not um, significant hurdles. So, uh, anyway, Abe, I'm sorry I sort of took that one over, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would just want to add, I mean, um, not to plug my own stuff, but we did data mining too, and I went over a good half hour on listing optimization, how to build, uh, how to write good marketing copy, how to write for benefits, how to, you know, build your listing easy tricks to convert your descriptions and HTML, um, you know, just how to just construct keywords in your title and things like that. Um, and what I want to say though, is if you're really stressed on building a listing, um, I think I even posted a group today on, on ways to kind of just test keywords and simple listings to launch, um, to see where you rank on the page before you dial it in, even on the keyword level. But what I would do is I would get some good pictures up, uh, initially, mm -hmm. I would target some keywords in a good structured title. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just take some of the features of your product when you're writing bullets and just create a simple benefit for the customer. You know, how does mm -hmm. that feature benefit them? If you start to write that way in just that simple format, it's going to make a big difference. But initially, when you launch your product, especially what Mike talked about, how you're just kind of testing it out at first. I mean, you don't have to completely overthink the product and build this incredible product listing right mm -hmm. away. You know, just get something up there. Mike calls them skeleton listings. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you really don't know what you're targeting yet. 
you know, you, you can do your best guess with data mining or however you get there uh, to build your, your keywords into there. And, you know, you want to write some product benefits, have a couple of really good pictures. That's going to help your conversion. Uh, but really just get a list in and up. You don't have to overthink the process. You know, so many times have I launched funnels and back even when I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I just threw a listing up. I mean, you know, eventually probably got suppressed or I had to change the title when I figured out like what merchant words was and you know, all this, but like in the beginning, I was so naive that I just did this without thinking about it because I didn't know any better. Now I know better. So, you know, it, it'll be better. It's still, you can still not overthink the process and follow Amazon's terms of service. So you can just, you know, you can go past all those roadblocks really quickly. Yeah. It, it really doesn't take long. You construct a simple listing in like 10, 15 minutes um, and just get a product live on Amazon then start to do your, your, um, you know, your, you know, you know, if you're going to run sponsored ads or test out some keywords by looking to see where your position is on the page, try to focus on a target but definitely, you know, practice writing for benefits. You know, that's mm -hmm. a key. So, yeah, I, know, you know, I think it's great listings. And I do for me, I, I, I could go with the people know they're doing, right? So I look at the listing. Who am I targeting, first of all? If my competitor is on page one, that's got to work a little bit. So I'm like, okay, what's, what do they have? Check their listing out. Use them as a copy. What, what is your target product? You're going against somebody. If you're on page one, you're basically become a bullseye. Your product is now a bullseye for everybody to go after, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a private label seller on page one, and everybody's like, ooh, I want to get there too. So all of a sudden, you become the wanted man. You have like a, a poster on a tree. Everybody's <laughs> coming after you. So That's true. Look at their products and say, hey, what are they doing? You can use their, yeah. their whole listing as an example and make it a little better. If yours is a little bit better than theirs are. If you're, usually, you can be very easily. If mm -hmm. you do a better hero image, your main image is called a hero image, Throw maybe a social image in there, and you drop mm -hmm. a product paper in there. A couple better pictures, a couple better listings. It's, an, it's that's a skeleton listing. That's not going crazy yet, like you know what Abe's talking about when he goes into it deeper as it sells. But you can easily look at the number one product, and you can say, hey, what are they, what are they doing right? You know, because they, obviously they're there for a reason. You can use that as a model and just to prove on it. And then definitely what Abe's talking about, and I think Emily does it too. Once mm -hmm. you get into the conversion side of it, once your product is a a vetted winner, you're going to get into conversions. And that's where you start getting really into the copy, looking for stuff to make that like a sales copy on a sales page. Mm -hmm. You've got to get into the copy there. But in the beginning, you don't get there. But when the time comes, you want to get there. So initially, think about getting, what's my number one person doing? Now, if they have a really, really good copy, they may be harder to go against than you think. So it's one of your vetting scenarios. Say, wait a minute, that's really good. Can I go against that at all? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. it's, kind of, it's kind of like, okay, hey, okay, wait, I can do that. I just can, mm -hmm. I can do that myself. I can copy it. I can, I can make it a little bit better. I can do a better image. And that's kind of a target, too. If mm -hmm. I have a registry product that's killing it, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. You know, unless there's some products below that I can go after. Unless I'm a little bit different. See, that's part of your vetting process. Mm -hmm. Know yeah. your target. Who's your bullseye? And can you beat them in that, in that bullseye, what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, de I definitely look at uh, listings when I'm – you know, looking to target products and I'm, I'm looking to go against people. I want to know, especially if there's a big seller in there, you know, how well has he optimized his listing? You know, mm -hmm. and, and one thing I want to say about listings too, is you have to remember you're always writing a listing for two different audiences. One of them is the customer, right? So that's your, uh, you know, your conversion, your sales conversion, so you're writing for benefits to the customer. The other audience is Amazon search engine optimization. So that's where you want to have your keywords dialed in so that you can, you know, get the best position based on Amazon's, you know, relevant search right. results. So if you think in those two perspectives, you know, you want to write to, you want to write to optimize both of those. So, you know, you don't want to forget about the customer. You know, everyone talks about keywords, but don't forget about the customer because that's once right. you sell your product, it's your job to sell that product to them, right? That's your job. So you can get the exposure, but then you got to convert. And that's yeah. where writing to the customer, writing those benefits kicks in. So, you know, think of it like that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we've all seen those listings too, where it's just keywords all over plastered and there's no, it's just ugly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at some point you got to pretty it up and make it, um, you know, show the features and, and how the customer is going to benefit. That's good. Okay. 
We're on the last one. 10 ways you're making private label the easy way hard. You think that you're alone. And um, I tell you, our, uh, the Facebook community is one of my favorite places to be on Facebook. I love it. I love all of you guys there. Um, it's, it's incredible, just the encouragement. And it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what questions you have. Um, people are there to respond. And people are helping each other. It's so fun. I love it. And uh, I want to, you know, probably most of the people on this call are already using it. I want to pull everybody in. We've got 515 people in there, and um, I really think a lot of people are missing out. But use it. Use it. Don't just um, say, hey, how's it going? Or, you know, <laughs> ask questions and, don't, and, I, and share your success and share, hey, I messed up here, but this is what I learned, you know. Um, it's, a, it's just such a great community, and it helps. I think that when we – sometimes we think, you know, we're home – maybe in our home office or whatever, we're sitting at a coffee shop trying to do our work and we think we're all alone and uh, we just, the, we're not, there's a community and it's extremely valuable. So you- It's incredibly valuable. Yeah. I think I, I, for, I don't know how many years, I didn't speak, I was part of a ton of communities, but I didn't speak, I didn't say anything, I just read, I just absorbed, and I didn't interact, and it was one of my very first public posts that I ever said anything. And that's when Ryan was like, hey, <laughs> yeah. but I was awesome. like, hey, you know, and things yeah. changed from there. So yeah. It wasn't until I, I started speaking. That's so anyway, awesome. Like, there's really, and then ever since then, I started seeing the value of interacting, and it was like, you know, here's a struggle that I'm having. Or, <laughs> what about you? What about this? You start asking questions. I was embarrassed. The, the problem was, I was embarrassed. For mm. the first you know, however long I just would scroll through and I would look in any one of the online communities. If I had a question, I would use the search thing to say, okay, did anybody ask a question? Like, I don't want to know right. And the yeah. truth is, is, it's so silly. It's so silly. So I've done that. Don't do that. If there's so, uh, there's so many benefits to this. It's like, uh, uh, you know, it feels like it could be online coaching at all times. You have a question, someone in the group's probably going to yep. give you some sort yep. of answer or direct you to a place that you can find the answer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're people from all around the world. We're in all, all of us, all of us here are in different time zones, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got even more outside of that. So, uh, you know, definitely use the, the Facebook group and other communities being online. It's just incredibly valuable. Thank you so much. for I, gotta, I, gotta, I, have, I, have a, I have a quick funny story. Sorry to jump in, but Ryan sent me a picture on Skype the other day, and it was from 2015, and we were at CES in Louisville, CES3, I believe, right? I'm sitting right next to Ryan, Ryan and his wife, and never, never said a word to him. And I'll tell you, I was new. I was probably six or seven months into the train, and... You know, I, I, I was I, I have, was not confident about my business then. I was, you know, <laughs> I am kind of an introvert type guy, you know. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there on the table just watching like Brett Bartlett speak. And Brian Rieger is right next to me. I knew who he was because he had just spoke probably. <laughs> but I could have just looked over, hey, Brian, how you doing? Uh, my name's Abe, you know. And like <laughs> probably saved myself a year of frustration. <laughs> learning privately. But, you know, I That's didn't awesome. speak up. And, you know, but it was at that conference where I did meet people that totally changed the way I look at this business. And, and that's when I realized that building a network was going to be key to grow in this business. You mm -hmm. know, so that's when I started to realize that. So I started to focus on building a network and I started seeking mentors and I started building mastermind groups. I started helping others when I was learning different things, you know, so, um, you know, building that in, and so the private label mentoring group is that platform for all of you. Mm -hmm. And don't feel shy about reaching out to anybody. I love when people message me or ask me questions and I get to talk about my crazy data mining strategies. I mean, don't threaten me with a good time. Seriously. So, <laughs> you guys, I mean, don't hesitate. Ask me questions. Ask any one of us questions. Yeah. We love to talk about our business. We love, we love that. I love that. I love yeah, it. we love to help people. So, um, you know, it, and, and you wouldn't believe it. You know, I started coaching re recently and had a, 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 one of the students at work would say, why are you doing this? Why are you even coaching? You know, and I had to explain to him, like, you know, this is part of the process. Like someone mentored me. Somebody helped me along the way. You know, mm -hmm. so now it's my job to help somebody else and bring them up. And guess what? That always comes back. Every mm -hmm. time you, you pick somebody up and you teach them some unique tactics, every time 
that comes back and benefits me just as much because I learn just as much, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so please don't hesitate, get active in the group. I'll tell you, the group is only going to be as valuable as the interaction in it. Yeah. You know, we can put as much content out there as, as we can, but until you guys jump in and take action and, and get involved and ask questions and bring some value to the group, it could be so much better. Yeah. I encourage you to just get involved and get 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 into that. Okay, I'm done. That's all I got. Yep. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Oh, I'm popped up now. That's what motivated me. I feel good about that. <laughs> no, it's bedtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're going a little over. So. Right. Yeah. No, I'm no. good. I'm 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 all night. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so those are just 10 guys, 10 ways that we've, um, Come on, give us 10 more, 10 more. Right? <laughs> I have notes for a couple more that we could throw out, but, um, I'm kind of wondering, is there anything, uh, that, that, um, any, any, and what's pressing, I guess I want to ask, what are you, how are you making the process hard and really quick while you're thinking about that, Ryan, um, do you want to go? just recap kind of on what the whole process is that really is this easy. Yeah. So, I mean, um, and we're again, working on a, um, uh, kind of an infographic, but this is kind of a simpler one here, uh, find a product, go through the process. Are you, uh, you have things that are already you're interested in, you're already selling well, uh, go through Abe's data mining, a workshop, use the keyword inspector to find trends, whatever, however you decide to get to a product, just find one, select one, it doesn't have to be the one that you think that's going to make you a millionaire. Just pick it, uh, find a source for it, send it into Amazon, run sponsored ads on it, uh, and follow what Mike talks about in his uh, Amazon PPC workshop we did a few weeks ago. Just get the data from it. Is it a winner? Is it a loser? Um, that's the test area there. Um, if it's a winner, you scale it up, you find more and, and, and send more in. If it's a loser, guys, drop it and go back to the beginning and find a new product. You could do this. Um, you could have several products going through this exact same process all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, I'm again, Abe, Abe, you nailed it, man. We used to talk about how you're learning um, stuff all the time. I've learned so much since I wrote the book, Private Label, The Easy Way. Um, listening, hearing you guys, you and uh, Mike especially, talking about the data side of this. Mm -hmm. um, when I first learned this, it was all about picking a product, hoping it, hoping it would sell, uh, get a bunch of reviews, get it out to friends and family, use the review sites, mm -hmm. and you can't do that anymore. And mm -hmm. so you've got to have to at the beginning, you just have to be more selective. You have to, um, the way to do, the way to test it, you just go through the testing process, do the keywords or do Amazon sponsored ads. I think that is uh, the biggest way to do it. Don't go deep until um, you have the data. Um, I think Mike posted in another Facebook group um, about not going deep until you ha had the data. And I said, no data equals no deep. So don't spend thousands of dollars on a product until you know it's successful. And the way you know it's successful is if you send it in, just do a few and you ran ads on it and it works. Um, and people are actually searching for that product. So I hate hearing stories of people that spend thousands of dollars on something that uh, they have no idea if it's going to work. Um, don't do that, guys. Um, don't do that here. We'll teach you the easy way method. Start small, start slow, start very low investment, very low risk. Get it in, get the data, and then decide if it's a winner or a loser. Mm -hmm. There's a couple um, posts in the chat, and, and um, Audrey, it looks like you know writing down your goals, that helped you take those action steps so you knew what they were, and you kind of had a set a plan for yourself. And I think it was... Um, I think it was Mike. I'm trying to remember. I wrote, I was taking notes while you guys were talking and um, about just, no, it was a creating, Mike, create a process, a repeatable process for yourself. So write that down, you know, and then, and then that will help you move forward. And um, also uh, my most challenging step is making the leap to actually purchase a product. And that is so common. And that, I think when you take if you could do it with, um, you know, retail arbitrage, you can do it with private label. Just think of it different. Think of it. I'm going to take this and send it in and test it. I'm going to, I'm not, this might not be, it might be, but take the pressure off of ever even having to get it to be a private label product. Or you can just tell yourself, I, I still to this day will not spend more than a hundred dollars. There you go. 
Yeah. I do. I, I have I have two that are in route to me right now that I have ordered. So I've, I, I've laid out two. Actually, they're both less than $100. But uh, I've laid out. So I have two of those that I'm practicing just uh, they're going to go to and they're going to ship to Amazon probably they'll get to me this week. I'll send them out next week. They'll or they'll be at Amazon next week. I won't spend more than that. And if they're duds, I just tell myself, great. I think I probably again, it was probably that 80 to $90 range. So what I lost that. So what I learned, right? But, you know, it's, I just, I refuse. I still to this day have a cap where I really don't want to go above that hundred dollar mark because I know I'm willing to me. I'm willing to gamble that I'm willing to gamble a hundred dollars every single time. If I think it's a good product, I'm willing to practice it. And it's not a full on gamble. If you use some of well, the techniques at the beginning too, right. it's, you know, so now, the odds are in your favor. Which I find interesting. I'm reading that same question here and, you know, and I think it's um, Balak had mentioned there about she created bundles and started products in the past, but the PL part is throwing her off. You know, to me, in the beginning, a private label, a bundle, whatever it is, a unique UPC. So to there me, you go. I call mm -hmm. bundles yeah. a pseudo private label. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of brands in there, whatever it is, but it's a unique, it's a, your unique UPC that makes your listing unique where it's only you. Mm -hmm. right? So if it's a private label or if it's a bundle that's unique to you as UPC, it's all the same to me in the beginning. Right. So, Bets until it tells me, hey, I, this is going to sell. Then I then I go back and I might do a new listing with my PL and all that. But that's something to probably talk about. That's kind of the, the biggest hangup I see is, is, hey, when do I go from a bundle to a PL? You know, what's, what's mm -hmm. the difference between the two? And the obvious difference is your own name, your own brand, and all that. And really, you can create. But if you really want to test things out quickly, you could make basic bundles as long as it's unique using your UPC, yep. right? As long as you're not brand restricted on those brands, right? You're not, you're not, um, you're going by Amazon's term of services. You're doing all the rules in your listing. You can still do it that way if you feel comfortable using your your bundle technique to test things out. Then you easily can go back later on and, and create a private label bundle as well. So I think it works either way for me. I've done it both ways. I don't care. Yep. To be honest with you. Um, and so if you when you're taking two products together, you know you're going to have a unique UPC. So that's the bottom line. That's a good um, way to look at it. Yeah, and also going back to the private label in the box, you know, take a couple of those things, throw them together and you got a PL. The PL to me, you're not going to be Nike overnight. You're not going to be, um, you know, Adidas, you know, the next day. Mm -hmm. this, that takes forever. The unique opportunity on Amazon is that anybody here can take a hundred dollars or less and have a private label to test. That's, mm -hmm. that's so unique. You, you have 50 million customers that can buy it at one point. If it all works out and bets, you're easily going to scale it up and, and, and get even fancier with it. And that's 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 the proposition that you're getting from Amazon. You have tons of customers. You don't worry about traffic at all. It's already there. It's, you can't get any more traffic than Amazon, period. So you have to just really figure out, you know, if I'm doing bundles, there's no reason why you can't just list it and do this, all the process steps until you feel comfortable putting your own label on a package. It's the same packaging. You're still going to use a poly bag. You're still going to so, – okay, let's compare it. You have a poly bag and a poly bag, right? And if you're doing bundles, all you're doing is taking your sticker, yep. name on it, and stick it on it. Yep. And you're done. Now, if you're selling baby products and things that you know may have liability issues, you want to get basic stuff that's easy to right. hurt anybody, right? So private label, you do take on the you do take on risk that way, but you don't sell risky things. I wouldn't be selling right. You know, right. not wash for babies. Yeah, you know, wouldn't be doing that. I'd be selling really basic items that are that are that kind of break. They're easy to use. Um, and that you can put together very simply and it's tons of them. I mean, this, if you're doing bundles, I'm telling you, PL is, you're, you're there already. You're doing it basically. Yeah. So. It's not yeah, your, you're, definitely, you're, you're definitely there already. And I, I just want to jump in and say, I, I, when I started, look, I would, I did bundles for a long time before I officially did a private label and it, it just simply like the, the blur, those lines between private label and bundling just kind of faded away. Right. And I simply just ordered my bundles from a wholesaler with generic products. That's, that's the simplest step that I did. The only transition that I did that just. Yeah, it's very good. It's, it's driven. And you create They're breaking a up. bundle that way. And then you, you start to see like, okay, now. The, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> can you hear me? You were. I can hear you now. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, so just the point I was trying to make um, that it's just a very simple transition to just simply order from a wholesaler that sells generic products, um, yeah. and and you yeah. can just bundle those products together and just you know don't throw a brand name on on listing. You know, 
And then one right. and the other thing is when you set up your repeatable process, you know, you just you, you're simply just going, you're sourcing, you're ordering the product, you're getting the product. Once you get to Amazon, you're creating your listing, and then you're you're doing your after like sponsored ads collecting data, and you constantly refine that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you just do that over and over and over again, and get better at it. So mm -hmm. and then the product, the product works Starting out. That's the fun part, and you get into your thing, yep. into the great labels, you get into the great product labels, and it gets really exciting because now, yeah. now you know you're, it's going to sell. It's like buying yeah. something you know it's going to sell now. But you know, yeah. they get crazy doing all this work. I did I did it myself. I did the same thing. I first came on. I was worried about this, the website, all these different things. Like, wow, this will take forever to do this, you know. And finally, I, I, somebody told me, "Hey, what are you doing all that for? What are you crazy?" <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? You go, just stick it in a bag, put your label on, throw it in. Like, okay. So I did it's that. Just, like, wow, that was really easy. And I, I it's just a mind shift. Power. It's a mind shift. And in the mastermind yep. group, I was saying how really you're. It's like you're bundling. You're taking a non-brand driven item that's generic, and you're bundling it with your packaging. Then that's your private label, the easy way. Yeah. And so think of it as a bundle instead of private label. I mean, it's just, it, you know, get, don't get caught up in the terms. Don't get right. caught up in the terms. Um, okay. Well, thanks guys. I, um, we went long. I'm sorry. I need to do a little bit better time management there. I was surprised. wasn't surprised, but um, I wasn't sure how, how long if I, if we were going to go over or what, but uh, great stuff here. And yes. um, we'll see you guys in the group. If you have any more questions, we'll have a replay on this. Um, available and I'll post it uh, Ryan will post it in the group and if you have any more questions or anything um, go go get in the Facebook group and we'll we'll see you in there yep